Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today we're going to be creating the, this legendary creature of a thunderbird. And we can find this symbol in Native American art and culture. And different tribes believed it, stand, stand, it stood for tr strength and power. And it believed that the thunderbird harnessed the powers of the earth to water and make the plants grow. And they believe that lightning flashed from its beaks and the beating of the wings was the symbol of rolling of thunder. And we can see this in different tribes' artworks throughout the North and the Southwest. So many Native American tribes use this symbol in their artwork. To start the Thunderbird design, we're going to go to the very top of our page. I'm just going to slide it down a little bit here. And we're going to find the top middle. So I look from the side to side, and I go in the very center. And I'm going to make a mark directly below the top of the page, just a horizontal line. I don't want it to touch the edge of my page. I need to leave a little bit of room. And if you look, if you put your finger at the top, it's only about a finger's space down. We're going to use our whole page today to create the Thunderbird. From here, directly below that, I'm going to do a circle. Now, if you look at the size of my fingernail, the circle's just a little bit smaller than the nail, your fingernail. It's almost the size of a pea the green vegetable pea that we eat. That's going to be the Thunderbird's eye. Now we're going to draw right around that shape for the head. So I'm going to come up down and around as a circle, down and around to make a circle. You don't want the head to be really, really small. It looks kind of like a lopsided donut. If you notice, it's a little bit bigger on this end down at the bottom. If yours is almost the same, don't worry about it. That's the Thunderbird head. And if you look, if you put two fingers, it should be a little bit bigger than the width of two fingers. Now we're going to do the Thunderbird beak. We're going to come to this edge of the circle and we're gonna come out straight, just a short line straight. Now they, they say that the Thunderbird is in the likeness of an eagle, the, one of the greatest birds. So I'm coming down like an eagle beak, a sharp beak. So I'm gonna coming out and slowly down. The Thunderbird symbol is just made with simple geometric shapes and lines. Now I'm coming up slightly and right to the head. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and curve out slightly for a neck, down and curve out slightly. Now we want to use the whole page, so we're going to come across for the wings. And we want them to be as symmetrical as we can, so I'm going to come across horizontal and then before I reach the end, I'm just going to stop, go maybe a little bit farther. I want to leave a little bit of space here around the wing. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'm coming across horizontal. And take your time. Do it slowly. Your line should never be rushed and scribbled, especially because we're doing um, this type of a Thunderbird where it's more geometric in shape. This one is from the Great Plains. And then we're going to curve around and then I'm going to drop down. And I'm going to go to, if you, if you measure on the side here, so I go from top to bottom, I want to find the center and I'm just going to come over and I want to go right about to the middle of the page. So drop down to just about the center of the page from top to bottom. Mine's a little bit farther than the center and that's okay. And then I'm going to measure up on the other side too. So I'm just going to round this 
and drop down as well. I want to make sure that it's the same, same on both sides. So you can measure up. This one I can bring down a little bit more. You want to make sure they are equally lined up. And how I did that is I just measured them with my finger. You know, you can open up your finger. Do that as a measuring tool. Pull it over. And I'm not moving my finger. And I'm measuring it here. Let's see. Oh, this one could come down a hair more. Of course, you can use a ruler. Or you can even line it up this way, too. You take the pen, your paper. Bring it together to che check. There. And I have it almost exact. So now I have my wings mapped out. Now what I'm going to do for the wings is I'm going to come over. It's about a finger's width over. So I'm measuring over. And I'm going to do the stair step design. It's just a simple stair step design bringing me in about it's probably three quarters of an inch to an inch and then up in then up in then up and then in it's going to be about your finger space so i'm going to do the finger space up straight up And I'm going to do the same on this side. And then I'm going to go in. So if you put your finger down, I'm going in. So I've just made a box or a stair, a step around my finger. So I'm going to put my finger on this side. Go in as a finger measurement. Then I'm going to go up straight up. Now this should form a right angle. So if you measured the angle here, it's going to be 90 degrees. Same thing here, 90 degrees. So you don't want your squares or steps to be crooked or diagonal. So I'm going to go up one finger. And once you have the estimated measurement in, you can just guess once you know that. It's about the same space up and in. Now I'm going to go up again. Again, up one finger measurement. Up one finger measurement. And notice we're slowly going in and up. And that's to create this design. And then I'm going to go over one more time. over one more time. And it could be off a little bit, but don't worry about that if it's off a tad. Now, some of you may be able to go, depending on how big your design is, you may have to go up one and over one again, but mine's pretty much big enough like this. Now, on the directly below this, I'm gonna make the chest design coming in. This is like the bald eagle's white chest and feather design here. So come down, drop down just a little bit, put a dot. Now I'm just going to go over and over on each side. And notice there's space right here because I want this space left, this negative space here. And I'm going to do a down, down, and then I'm making a zigzag pattern up back up back and just zigzag it till you have till you connect to here and this would be like the bald eagle he has a white chest now from here i'm going to drop down diagonal drop down diagonal and i've come in diagonal and then i'm going to connect it And now I'm going to take these corner lines and just come in and in.
So this almost forms, this would be triangular shaped. It tapers in diagonally. Now we're gonna connect it together. And the bottom part here is now gonna form the tail design. And this is a very simplified geometric design. So I'm gonna go diagonally down and I'm gonna almost go to the bottom of this page. I'm gonna keep, keep one finger and I'm gonna stop before I reach the finger, right there. I wanna leave this area where I can go diagonally in. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So I'm coming diagonally down and out and stopping one finger space before my bottom. Now I'm gonna do my zigzag tail design. So we zigzag here. So I'm going to go down and up. It's like a letter V. Down and up. Now sometimes if you want to start here, down and up, same size, and then you can adjust the inside one to meet, to match as you need to. For example, here I don't have room for two of them. So my inside one, I'm just gonna make a little bit bigger. But however you like to do that, you could just go down and up, down and up, down and up, whatever's easier for you. Now we're gonna put a straight line horizontal across, and I'm gonna do several of them here, three. This just gives some neat pattern in here. And now I connect the point to this line on each one. And this is gonna define each feather at the bottom. And we're gonna add a little bit of more definition for a feather, just a neat line in the middle here. This is kinda of like the center of each feather. And then the tips of each feather are darker, so I'm gonna do a V on each of the tips. When you do your lines, do it slowly and carefully so they meet, so it's similar in size. This helps with what's called craftsmanship. If I did this too fast, it would be a little sloppy, messy. Now we're gonna do some more of this stair step design in here. So I'm gonna come off the side here, down straight and over. And I'm just gonna mimic this, these steps here. So I'm coming down a little bit, over, down, over, down, over, and then I'll meet it together. So I have a similar space, like a path coming through here. And we'll do the same on the other side. So I'm gonna do my straight line over, straight line down. And then I'm gonna come over, down. And I'm gonna do the same here as I come up and over and I'm just gonna mimic this like a, you're leaving a maze space, so an equal distance. You wanna come over and back. And if you do it slowly and carefully, you'll have equal distance coming around here. Now we can do the same on the inside. I'm just gonna come down and over. Just giving a space here. Down and over, giving a square. So this will give us spaces for different colors. And that's how you would do it, just a simple geometric thunderbird. And now you want to look on a, a, a symbol sheet matching up some colors because when they did their colors, they, symbol, they used color as symbols as well as designs. Here is a color meeting chart that I made up for my kids and I have this on my Patreon account. 
If you click on the title of the video, it'll take you to the Patreon account. I also have a typed version here on the Patreon account if you want to use that as well. With Native American art, there's many meanings with colors, and the colors can mean many things depending on what they're using the color for. For, for, for example, if you're face painting, the colors symbolize and mean one thing. And then sometimes it could mean the same thing if they're going to be painting on their totem poles or the pottery that they make, maybe in the Northwest uh, pottery. And, and a lot of times they overlap in meaning. A lot of them, for example, the green means earth, um, healthy, harmony, and some, you know, a lot of times these colors will overlap in the same meanings. And what I did was I took some of the most important of all of the different kinds of tribes and put them together in a meaning, in a color meaning sheet. So that's where I got a lot of this from. So some of it's from the war paint or the face paintings and some are from art and from different regions of the areas as well. So if that makes sense. So now we're going to go ahead and color in our Thunderbird design and we're going to use whatever materials you have at home or in my classroom you can be using crayons and markers right now to color in your design and I'm going to show you what it looks like when we're all done. So here is the finished Thunderbird design and I chose the red beak because it symbolized strength and I wanted it to have a nice strong powerful beak and then I chose orange as the base color for the bird because of the symbol of kinship and determination and intellect and then I used yellow for symbolizing happiness I wanted this to be more on the positive side so I used a lot of positive symbols and then I chose green uh, for summer and for health and healing and the earth because the earth was very important to Native Americans they called it the mother because it gave life to everything so there is my story of my Thunderbird and the meanings of my colors and why I chose them so I hope you enjoyed this lesson and make sure that you hit the like button and if you would like to sign up to support this channel, I have now a Patreon account and we would love for you to join me and then you'd have access to all of my uh, teaching materials as well. And I do wanna give a shout out and a thank you to all of my patrons in my Patreon account. Your support is greatly appreciated.